We are live, guys. All right, we're live. All right, hey, hey, hey. I am Lisa Fanuka, National Director of Education with Wall Professional, and I am here with these three lovely ladies today, Booksy and Behind the Chair, and we're here talking all things short hair. I'm going to start it right over here by talking to my good friend, Taylor. Hey, 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 how are you? Why don't you give us a little walk through what you're doing? It's a huge transformation. Hey, y'all, so I'm super excited. We're definitely going to be doing quite the transformation today. Caroline's been growing her hair out for a while now, and she said, we'll do whatever you want. So I'm going to go in there and fade her up, and then we're going to do a cute little micro print in the front. And I want to accentuate her natural wave pattern. So stay tuned. Awesome. And what was your inspiration for this? She's done quite a lot of hair. So how are you going to kind of like approach this? I'm big on texture and movement. So this is like the ideal hair type that I just love to work with. I think it's so fun. So I'm just going to embrace it and remove a lot of bulk and texturize it a lot and let it live how it wants to live. Awesome. Can't wait to see what this is going to look like. I'm moving it over here to Tina Sophia. What do you have going on, girly? What are we so, doing here? So what I'm going to do is a low taper, well, basically a low fade. I'm going to cut some of this bulk out with some clipper over comb techniques and also just taper the nape of the neck and the sideburns out completely. Give it a nice little lineup and... That's it. So is this a haircut you do quite a bit? Yes, we have a lot, a lot of people growing out their hair, and um, but just kind of want to clean up. So we just do low fades on them, or drop fades as we call it. And what that means is we go from here, all the way around the neck and down the the short hair. So is um, Jesse wanting to grow out the top? Is that kind of what she was telling you? Jesse wants to grow out the top. So um, what I'm going to try to do is keep as little, I mean, keep as much as possible here without going too high. All right, one last question before you're off the hook. So I see you're using a wall senior, and yes. what is the number of the attachment comb you're using? The clipper attachment is a one and a half. Is it closed? And open? I have it all the way, all open. The way open. So awesome. it's cutting the least amount of hair that this clipper attachment cuts. Awesome. Great. Lisa, before we move on, do you want to tell everyone about the, the giveaway if they Absolutely. comment? Absolutely. So there is an awesome giveaway today. So what we're giving away is a wall cordless magic cut. We're giving away a mag trimmer. We're giving away a finale shaver. And we're also giving one free year of Booksy and Booksy hoodie and a t-shirt. That's and awesome. All you have to do to start to win these is to just comment. So make sure you comment and you ask questions. We're here. You've got three of the best women in the business all here to answer all of your questions. Fabulous. All right. Thank I'm you. Moving all around. Jamie, last but not least, what have you got going on here? Ooh, look at you. You're starting with the new. Oh, so this is the mad trimmer that you're going to use. So you need to start off strong. Tell me what you're doing and how you chose that tool and what's going on. Yeah, so, so far what I've done is our model ratio. I've taken my shears and I've created a hard line of demarcation to separate the top and the side and I low fade them. So I'm going to go in. Follow my fade line that I've already created, and I'm going to fade up to that line, and then I'm going to drop it back uh, and have this hard line on both sides, and then blend up the back and maybe do a little design in the, in the nape area for you guys. So I know a lot of people, you know, we talk about fades and low fades, high fades, mid fades. Tell me how you determine that this is going to be the, the fade line that you need to determine. Yeah. This isn't where you start all your fades, right? No, that's a okay. great question. So basically what I like to do is create a, a really great little head shape to determine where the fade is going to be. So I can take my comb and wherever the comb leaves the head here, that would be considered like a high fade zone. And a really easy tip that I like to use is take my hand and create wherever my hand would leave the head. So here would be like a high fade. And then the mid fade is usually like in the temple area, even with her eye. And then the low fade is like right at the sideburn area. So you go low, medium, high. And right at those three places, you can feel the clipper, the head push the clipper away. That's an excellent, excellent, excellent training point of view, actually, because we get questions all the time with all professional like, what's a mid fade? What's a high fade? What's a. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And it's all within that parietal ridge area. Mm -hmm. Great. Awesome. And how much do you take into consideration the texture? Could it be a low, high mid fade on any texture? Or tell me a little bit about how texture comes into play when yeah. you have that fade. Great question. 
So really, the texture of the hair, it's more of the head shape itself that I take into consideration and the overall shape of the hair that I want to create. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to let you get to Rachel. I'm enough of you on the hot cam. Go back over to Taylor. How are we doing, Tay? We're doing good. Awesome. Where are we at? So I'm working in the parietal ridge as well. Like Jamie was saying, I always say this is the most important part in short haircuts because it's where you're going to see the shape. So I always like to start there. So right now I'm doing diagonal back sections and I'm pivoting my knuckles off the widest point of the head. So as we know, as we work our way towards the back of the head, the widest point is actually going to change and it's going to lower down. So I'm just making sure that I'm pivoting my fingers accordingly and keeping integrity with the head shape. It's awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this internal kind of bridal ridge and then blend it all in with the clipper is what I'm hearing you say. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Great. So, so we have two different ways of sort of fading and approaching the hair cutting right now. Where Jamie's starting this all with just a clipper. What Taylor's actually doing is she's going in and removing a lot of bulk with her shears. And then she's going to connect the two with her clipper. So it's a wonderful way of incorporating clipper cutting and the shear cutting too. So if you are someone out there right now that is a little bit maybe intimidated by just attacking an entire head with a clipper, there is a way to incorporate both. And watching the way that Taylor does it is wonderful because it's a wonderful way of kind of incorporating the control that you get with your shears and then all the blending that you can get in with your clipper. So this will be really great to see how you kind of finish all this up. Awesome. Speaking of clippers, we had a couple of questions coming in about Absolutely. our artists working with clippers. Uh, what clippers is each artist working with and what are your favorite clipper attachments, metal or plastic and why? So let's go over here because this wonderful thing is, is we have two different clippers being used. So right now, um, my good friend Tina here is using our cordless senior, which is from our five star line. One of our most popular, actually one of our most popular tools with law professionals. Um, she can tell you a little bit about why she uses it. It's a powerful motor and Go ahead, take it away, Dave. You so this is this is a five star senior, uh, which means this is good for any any type of hair texture. Um, it's, it has a very strong motor, has the V nine thousand motor. So basically, um, it'll cut through wet, dry. Um, and I like it because it's strong. It stays true, and I could use it with wet or dry. Yeah. So she's using the senior. Um, why is that? Is that your favorite clipper? Yes. Why is that your favorite clipper? Well, because like I said, it, it goes, I can, I can use it for all those reasons. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to switch out. This is my, my go-to. The plastic um, clipper attachment, attachments are great. I also use switch out uh, with the mentors. I have the wall mentors as well, which are detachable clippers. So what's unique about these, these are our premium guards from wall and they are plastic -y, but what they are is these are infused with fiberglass. So what they do is you get a really good slip through the hair. They don't get stuck. And if you, I don't know how close you can get with these, but there's little like balls on the end of here. Mm -hmm. So when you go through on some, you don't mm -hmm. hurt them. Oh, nice. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of, uh, we call these our attachment cones. There's a lot of them out there that will actually kind of snag on the customer's scalp when you do it. So another wonderful thing about the Senior or Five Star line is um, it's meant for all types of hair texture. So it can be used on anywhere from, you know, finer hair all the way to most thickest, densest um, yes. ethnic type hair, coarse hair as well. Awesome. So the difference between what Tina's using right now and Jamie's using our magic clip. So the magic clip, the difference between the magic clip and the senior are in the blade. So the magic clip blade, it's hard to really tell. It's almost like to the naked eye, you can't really see it. But it's a stagger to blade. So if you are a new kind of a fader, if you're new to fading, if you're new to barbering, you will love, 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 love the magic clip. That stagger sheet blade leaves a diffuse line of demarcation, which means that your blending efforts are going to be very easy. You're not going to, it's not going to take a lot to um, eliminate the lines that you create. Is that why you chose the magic clip, or what's your favorite thing about the magic clip? Yeah, so what I like to do is take the seniors with like a, say, a, a two guard, a two attachment blade and prep my canvas. So I, I come in with the two with the seniors because I feel like they're a little stronger and they take off hair faster right away. And then when I want to get into the smaller sections of hair and really start to fade, I like to work with the magic clip because we have that stagger tooth blade and I have a real nice blend. So what she's saying is if, for instance, Rachel came to her with a, a ton of hair and she needed to eliminate both quickly, 
That's where the seniors come into place because the senior has that really powerful motor and it can, for lack of a better word, just plow through hair yep, and yep. get that canvas right to where it is. And now she's using this magic clip to be able to kind of refine that haircut, get that line in, and start to blend out where she needs to blend out. And so tell us a little bit about which attachment comb we're using and where's your lever, lever set at right now. Yeah, so this is now a, a number one, and I start always with it open, being longest, and then I just gradually will work down and pull my leather up, my lever up. That way the hair goes from long to short. So open is long, and then I slowly go down to get it tighter and tighter and tighter. So right now I'm about in the middle, and I'm in the middle of my in my fade. So I'll go in and make sure it's nice and clean. And then when I come back down, I'll close it a little bit more and work my way all the way down. And what are you looking for, Jamie, when you're saying like clean? So what's not clean on this haircut now? Oh, clean. that's a great question. So right in through here, I feel like it's real, real clean. So I, I stay here until I see a nice transition from dark to light or from long to short. And now I'm gonna move from this section, the plane of the head right behind the ear to the next square inch right behind it. So you can see a little bit of some length still, still here to be cut off. So I'll come in and I'll open up my one guard and I'll use, uh, I'd like to go all the way. So vertical, diagonal, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, horizontal. And so I can clean all that hair with a one and a half and then I'll close it down and I'll go a little bit lower. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All the way until my blade is closed and then it gets, in my opinion, nice and clean. Absolutely, so you see how that is. So if I'm a new fader, what would be your number one tip? Um, practice, practice, practice. Get yourself a magic clip and work your way. Um, let the head push the clippers away. So when I'm coming up, the head stops me. I'm coming up, the head stops me. I don't have to turn and go into the hair. When I do, I end up just cutting everything the same length and it gets shorter. So what I want to do is to let the head push my clippers away. So getting used to and you can even close your eyes and feel it. Absolutely. So, did you answer the question? Yeah. Oh, that's the, that was the part. That was the question. Is that what, I know, is that Yeah, so, yeah, so you did get another question. Sure. And, it's, and it's like, what's the best way to transition the ball face into the crown? So, what were we saying? Don't snatch the crown. So, you don't, right. you want to be able to go, know when to release and let the head push the clipper away. So you could put, place your comb on the back. So here's the nape, here's the back where they meet. That is a the point of reference. That's a big change in direction, right? So then if you place the comb on the back and then you place your hand on the crown, you can see right here where my hand and the comb meet is where this clipper will naturally, if you don't follow the head shape, that clipper will push directly off the head and then you'll get your nice line of transformation or your fade line should be right in that zone where the comb and the clipper and the head meet. So you want to rock out right at that position. I love that. Don't snatch the crown. So that means you don't want to go too high in here because you wind up with sort of a, with a mistake. Yeah, yeah just a little, go a little, a little high. Higher. A little higher than you can All right, I'm going to go on over to Taylor right now, see how she's Great doing. Time. As we transition, we have a question coming in sure. from Tiffany. If Tiffany's looking to dabble into design, do you have any tips for her with fade design? And like design? graphics and yeah. stuff like that? Sure, absolutely. I'm actually going to let these young ladies talk about it. Um, I would say the number one tool to use here would be the detailer. And then there are some great ways to kind of get yourself used to it as you as you get your feedback. So I'm just going to, how did you get into graphics and what was the first couple times? Because I know the first few times I did it, it's like a disaster. So it does take some time. So tell us a little bit. I definitely use the detailers. I like them because they cut really nice right out of the box, which is hard to find. A lot of trimmers, you have to adjust them. So that's really good, especially for cosmetologists and myself. I don't know how to do that stuff. So I like it right out of the box. I also recommend holding them like a pencil. So the closer that your fingers are to the edge of the blade, the easier that it's going to be to have control. That's a great tip. Yeah. And the T blade on here is what's also going to give you the control to be able to do a graphic or draw. If you don't have the T blade, you're going to wind up with this being flush. Like we do have clip trimmers like this that are like 
not a keyblade that are close to the thing, it's going to be hard for you to get that dexterity and to be able to get in there and do a graphic with it. So the detail is great. Very, very sharp and very easy to hold. And especially for smaller hands, I find that it's a really great way to control it. And all these ladies are going to be doing some sort of graphic so we'll be able to see it as we go along. So tell us now what you've done. So we went through and we cut all this in and now we've got our magic hook with what um, guard are you doing? With? So right now I'm using a number two guard and as you can see, I haven't done this side yet. I went in and did the graduation earlier in the Tidal Ridge and now I can see a clear line as to where I need to meet the number two guard. So as a rule of thumb, anytime your fingers are touching the head, that should perfectly blend in with a number two guard. So realistically, I never use a guard over a number two. Is it closed, open, where's your lever at home? I have the lever open right now. Awesome. So you're at the longest number two. So will you ever start to close it or put it in the middle? I'll always, always open. start open, and then once it's not cutting anymore, I'll work my way down and start to close it. Awesome. Before we got to the clipper work, you uh, took using your dryer uh, to dry everything smooth through the head. Why did you do that between using your scissors and using your clippers? That's a really good question. I always like to blow dry the hair, especially in the curl ridge before I go in with clipper work, just because there are colics and there's a bounce to the hair that I want to make sure I hold integrity to when I'm using my clippers. Awesome. I'm going to walk on over to Sophia Barber over here, my good new friend from Florida. So tell us where we at here, hon. Oh, look, we've got, so now we're down to, we're, this is, so, so we're bald fading. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. bald fade the nape of the neck, neck with the side bends as well. All right, absolutely. So tell us what, so for someone who's brand new to fading, mm -hmm. not having that attachment comb and being, are you closed in the middle right now? Right now I'm all the way open. So, so what I did first was I brought it as close as the clip could go with the lever as close to the front, which means that's the most this clip is going to cut. Right. So I'm going to bring it down to a certain line. As you can see, the line demarcation is right here. And then once I do that, I open it all the way, which means now this, with no clip attachment, it, it's going to cut the least amount. So, and then I'm just going to fade so up and rock out. So this is super, super scary for somebody who's never done this because you have no attachment comb. You mm -hmm. are right on the skin. Yeah. You're getting very so what what are you looking for? If I'm gonna try to mimic this at home with Jesse, what am what am I gonna look for? What do I look for when I'm trying to use this? So so what makes this easy for for me is that I, I start off with the longer clipper clipper attachment and go down to skin. So then I can control where the bald is gonna go. So I'm not balding all the way up to here and then I'm worried about the line that I'm making. So what I do is I try not to create a line by going from the longest to shortest. It might take a little longer, but, but until you're used to it, that's the best way to go. And then you open it all the way up, you know, and just little by little take out the line. So whatever you put the line in with, that's what you're going to take the line out with. And how show. high do you feel like you're going to go? So I think I'm just going to keep it at this length and then like blend the little spots out afterwards. What I'm going to do is add a little design on the back and then go from there. Can I ask a couple of questions sure, from the absolutely. audience? A couple of people have asked about, well, let me start with this one. Do you usually finish one side first and then move on to the next? No. What I like to do is almost like a typewriter type style, like or corn on the cob. Corn on the thing. cob. So you go from one side to the other and then back so that I can keep track of where I'm, you know, build it. Build it. Exactly. So if I'm starting, you know, a bald right here at the ear, at the top of her ear, then I'm going to go all the way across, you know what I mean? And go back and forth. So I know over here, it's going to be the top of the ear as well. Okay. You get a lot of control that way yeah. when you go around as opposed to doing it in sections because you're seeing it as a complete canvas. And when we're talking about fading, we're talking about very short haircuts like this, really looking at the entire haircut as a whole, as opposed to sectioning, like when we're in longer haircuts, I think we see more section. In terms of shorter haircuts, when you look at it as an entire canvas art, to say like an entire piece of art, you get more control over it. Um, also back to how she's actually fading is a little different than I think what some people are used to, especially in the barbering world, where you put in like a very hard line uh -huh. and then you blend up to that. This is a more easier transition. And in my opinion, you get way more control and the overall effect is a lot nicer. It grows out as well, mm -hmm. very nice, because right. you can see her graduation is beautiful. So in two weeks, it's still gonna look as great. It's gonna be longer, 
but it's still gonna look really nice because how she's put that graduation in. Another question that's come through a couple of times is, can you see Hey, Lauren, I can't hear you for some reason. Lauren, would you mind leaving and then coming back in? I We seem to lo have lost your audio. Can you just come back into StreamYard? All right, guys, we're just going to watch the other two artists cut for a second and while Lauren rejoins. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties, but we'll be right back. Okay. All right. Ms. Taylor, tell us what you're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to find the shortest point in the center point of the fringe, and I'm going to make that my guide. So I'm just paying close attention to her natural bounds and making sure I have a loose tension. Okay, I think we have you back, Lauren. And awesome. Us, like, why loose tension is Perfect, like, thank you. Because I know once the hair dries, the colic is going to kind of bounce up, and I just want to make sure that I'm not cutting it too short, okay? Fringe is like the most, I think it's like the most important part of the pixie cut, right? Because it really is the first thing everybody sees. So do you customize fringe for every one of your customers or tell me a little bit about how you determine how that fringe is going to work? Yeah, so I definitely looked at Caroline's face shape before I decided what haircut we were going to do. And I know she has really pretty cheekbones, so I just wanted that shape to kind of sit on the cheekbone. So I'm always paying attention to the face shape. Um, I think it's important to know that you can use both square shapes on female and round shapes on men if it flatters their face shape. Absolutely, that's a really great point. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit, do you always start with your fringe in the middle? Is there ever a time when you would start with it at another, like would you ever start here and go that way or back and forth? Or are you always like a middle kind of person? Well, I'm doing almost a curtain shape, so I'm going to be over directing the exterior points to the interior. So that's why I'm starting at the middle here. Sometimes if I was going to do a straight across blunt cut, just for the comfort of my hands and holding the shears, I'll start on one side and work my way to the other. But for this example, I'm starting in the center and I'm just gonna over direct everything. And my, I'm gonna notice where my finger positioning is. So my knuckle is hitting the upper arch of Caroline's eyebrow. So I'm gonna make sure that's my finger positioning on the other side. Awesome. We had another question coming in from Kelly actually about working with clippers. What would you do if your client had very dense curly hair? Would you still choose to work with clippers over scissors? Absolutely. Actually, especially if we're talking about short haircuts, if someone has very dense, thick curly hair and they're wanting to do a really short cut like this, always with a clipper because what you're going to do is you're going to get a lot of control with the clipper. You're going to be able to take out a lot of that bulk. Just like you can see Taylor's in here, it might be not translating very well to the video, but her hair is very dense and very thick. Absolutely. So taking all of that out with a clipper and then refining it with either another clipper, a trimmer, or with shears, or with even texture shears is a wonderful way to be able to take that all down. And again, it also goes back to like growing out. When you're growing out really thick, dense hair, a lot of times if you don't see that graduation that you're going to get with a clipper, it looks like it's growing out in a round, almost like a bush thing. It looks like very, very round, but if you graduated it with that clipper, much like Taylor's done, it grows out in a graduated manner so that in two or three, four weeks, until she can get back into the shop or salon again, she's got another, it's almost like the haircut continues to transition and transform over time. So that's why it's great with the very thick dense hair to use that clipper so that you get that um, mileage out of the haircut. And they look they'll like, you know, they'll continue to like it as the haircut transforms and as it grows. And that's what I always say, the difference between a good haircut and a great haircut is how long it lasts. Mm -hmm. So for me, taking that extra time to create that graduation and really make sure that shape is stable and sturdy, it's the most important part for me. Awesome. And keep asking questions because that's the only way you're going to win our giveaways. 
Totally. <laughs> Anything else? All right, I'm going to go on to Jamie. She's, oh my, look at Jamie. She is like rocking and rolling here. What do you got going on, girly? So I've been using Rachel's, uh, the grain of her hair to kind of see, it's almost like wood grain, right? How those little, when the hair is clipper cut really short, you can kind of see movement. I use the lighting, I use her hair's texture, and I can kind of like see and read the hair and see exactly where I can create movement with the graphics like on her head shape. So I really don't really have a plan. I allow the head shape and the wood grain to kind of lead me to the lines I can fit in. So tell me that you arrived at all of this just kind of based on how her natural hair growth is in the yep, back of the day. Exactly. All right. So this is awesome and it's um you know it's more advanced for somebody who's maybe been doing hair like as long as you have and stuff. But tell me if I were going to start doing this today in my salon or in my shop, how would I just how would you suggest? So what was the very first graphic you did? What did that Yeah, mean? so you know what was really awesome? I had this one person, my friend Angela, she would come in every three weeks. She had super short hair and she was down to let me do whatever I wanted. And every three weeks I tried something new and every three weeks I tried fading her. And as I saw her, my skill set developed because I got to understand her head shape and how my tools work. So if you can get like a friend or family or you know, someone that really is open to your creative freedom that you can practice on. And and don't be scared, you know, when you're, the best part of cutting hair this short is that people aren't afraid to go shorter. Mm. Like your clipper cuts are short for a reason. That way, you know, if you don't like something, like right now, I had something going in here, I didn't like it, I just faded it right off. There's like no worries. And you know, I think what you're doing right now is almost like, just from being, so just from educating clippers for a while myself and listening to what people say, I don't think they understand the finishing that you're doing. I believe everyone thinks we take our detailer or our trimmer, we go and we make a graphic and that's it. Yeah. But it isn't. There's more to it. So you put in the, the first shape and now what are you doing? Yeah, 100%. So the first shape was almost like you're building your, your foundation. And now I'm going in and detailing. I'm trying to make things pop. I'm doing everything that I did on this side with a big fade that you would go up the side of the head in a little tiny area. So I'm taking my technique of going from longer to shorter in a smaller section. So as long as you get comfortable with the tools and practice, 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 this should take you just as long as it takes you to cut a long hair gap, right? Because it's all about the details. And like Taylor said, it's taking a haircut from good to great is giving him that, making sure it's going to grow out and be customized for their head shape. Absolutely. So we do have a question. Stacy wants to know, do you prefer to draw this line beforehand or just freehand it? So great question. I prefer to draw the line beforehand and that is me kind of freehanding it. You know, it's like, it's the same thing to me. Um, so yeah, just really being able to see the shape and the lines like for here, the way that this is growing, I would, you can almost see that another one would be perfectly placed there. And it it's isn't, like, it's um, great. Absolutely. And it isn't a bad idea if you're new to graphics to actually go and get one of those white pencils or even a white eyeliner and draw on and then go ahead and trace it over with your detailer or, of course, you want to use your detailer or mm. But um, the biggest, what you really want to make sure though is aside from whether you're going to draw it or freehand it, is that your trimmer is very sharp. It doesn't get any sharper than a detail. If it's dull or it's not cutting through, you're not going to be happy and you're going to be, you'll be very frustrated. So making sure that it's a sharp, very precise trimmer, much like a detailer with a T-blade, you'll find that you'll um, get success almost immediately. I think it's kind of easy to see it. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go over to Tina. Look at Tina go. I took a minute away and now she's working on some graphics. So tell us a little bit about how you came up with this. I just, I just go, like she said, with the shape of the head. I know she wants this to come almost to a point. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to make a little design that kind of creates that point to come down and then taper it out as much as possible. So what I do is I use the corners of this, of the TY blade. And with this, with uh, the detailers, the teeth are very close together. So it's sharper that way. Mm -hmm. So right out the box, like, like uh, Taylor said, right out of the box, it's very sharp. I go one way and then I turn this around 
And what it does is it cuts the bottom line. So at first you're cutting this, which cuts the top of the hair, and then you flip it over and it cuts the bottom. So, so the hair, the line is very crisp, as you can see. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. When you have a very, very sharp trimmer, you're going to be able to get in there and see the lines and see your shapes almost immediately. Now the trimmers do not come out of the box zero gaps. However, Wall Professional has just now released something called a Pro Set tool that you can buy on wallpro.com. And that comes now automatically when you buy a new detailer is there's a tool in there that you will, you will be able to zero gap these trimmers. So for your people who are zero gap fans, whether it's for uh, traditional trimmer use, putting in lines or putting in graphics, um, the, the detail is where it's at. It's good. And just so that you see the difference in what I'm talking about, this is the mag. And as you can tell, the T-blade is not on the mag. So in order to, if you were going to try to do this, you could, but it's going to be very cumbersome because you don't have the, I like to call it the real estate at the end of the trimmer. I don't mm -hmm. know what else you're supposed to, that's that my sense. thing. There's extra real estate. There isn't any backyard or front yard here. So you're not, you're going to have a hard time getting in there. Do you have any tips um, for taking care of your trimmers and clippers and making sure that they're like optimal every time you want to use them? Absolutely. So abs with COVID, you should be using our Clip with all of your trimmers and all of your clippers immediately after use. You will get instant. Um, so you want to take all the hair out, brush all the hair off, and then make sure you use your Clip. This gets rid of all of any kind of, um, what am I trying to say? It disinfects debris. everything. Debris. Yeah, debris. Yeah. And dis disinfects all of it immediately so you don't have to wait like I, some clipper um sprays you have to wait like seven eight minutes this one's immediate awesome and then at the end of the day you want to oil your clipper with our with our um well oil which we don't have to someone's got <laughs> someone somewhere we can show it cool yeah we can show it but you clipper maintenance i'm glad i don't know if someone asked the question they did it. clipper Oh, Lauren, it looks like we lost the audio. Oh, it's coming back. So sorry. the audio is just fading in and out. Okay, we're we back. got it. Awesome. Yep. Sorry. So all the stuff that comes from people's hair, whether it's oil, whether it's styling product, hair, it gets into the motor of that, of your clipper and your trimmer, and it will start to gunk it up, and it will start to not work as proficient as it should. Just like with any other, you oil, I always say to myself, you make sure that you change the oil in the car. Totally. You need to make sure you oil that up. So yes, absolutely. And Great it's important point. to do all that daily. I've so also, while I have you here, I've had a couple of questions in terms of like how long this would, you would book this for in the shop. Okay. Can you speak at all to that? Yes, yeah, definitely. Uh, I guess it depends on how, how you, how quickly you get through a haircut. And if you know your customer, if it's a brand new customer, I usually set 30, 30 minutes for this haircut. Um, because I want to make sure I'm, really catering to my customer to my client mm -hmm. totally so but usually about 20 20 to 30 minutes okay and how about important is the consultation when you're talking with your customers about, especially oh it's shorter number hair. one it's number right. one because there's no there's no forgiveness with short hair you know you, you can't so, nothing can hide no you can't <laughs> it's definitely you can't hide there. a bad haircut with short hair I got a question too from Janice. She's asking, do you use more than one clipper or trimmer on, on one head? And it looks I like, usually yes. do only because I know after a while, you know, if you're not efficient with your clipper, it, it get, get, does get a little warm. Okay. But, um, so I just have a few, you know, same, same clipper. I just switch out. I'll use this. And then if I'm getting to the skin, I'll switch out. So it's nice and fresh. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Awesome. Absolutely. So I'm going to go on over to Taylor here. She's got a diffuser out. So talk a little bit about what we're doing. It's going to be tough. So oh, like cute. I said earlier, I know I have like Halle Berry energy going on right now. Absolutely. <laughs> but I'm just going in with the diffuser because like I said, I really want to embrace the natural wave pattern. I put some sea salt spray in there too, right at the root to give it some lift. And then I'm going to go through and kind of smooth out the fringe and do some finishing details with my shears. And then I'll be going in and doing a low skin tape too, just to make it pop. Awesome. That's Add so some good. edge to it. Absolutely. Oh, look at the. Okay, so Tina, tell us a little bit about what you're doing here. So right here, what I'm doing, I'm I'm raking. So this is called raking, I guess. I'm turn, flip the clipper over, and we're, I'm smoothing this all down. So it's kind of layering, layering the hair. For what? So, so there's not so much bulk okay. right here. Um, 
you know, I want it to look, when it grows out, I want it to look like she can wear every hairstyle as it grows out. So this is in place of using like a texture shear for blending. Okay. So what you would get with a texture shear is it's that like they're notched, right? So texture shears like this, you've got the notches on. Mm -hmm. So you would go up and you would blend. What this is doing is it's going with the natural, like the natural growth pattern of the hair. And again, it, it speaks to how this short hair is going to cut out. So she's only, if you can see it, you're going down like that. You're, and the way that the guard is, you're taking like every other hair almost as if you were using a texture shear as well, too. So it's making sure that everything lays down very nicely and that it'll grow out nice. And if you kind of look at Jessie's hair, although she's got wonderful hair, you can see where it has a propensity. No, you're fine. <laughs> you can see where it has a propensity to want to like stick up on its own. Yeah. And when you know Tina was talking about it, she knew that she needed to use her clipper in that manner so that she's going with that grain. So it, it's encouraging it to lay down so that um, Jesse's not going to have to fight with it to mm -hmm. style as she... Jackie is asking, what guard do you have on while you're raking? This is a one and a half clipper attachment. Okay. Open. And it's right now it was in the middle. Okay. So, but you can start off with it all the way open. So you're taking the least amount of hair. Also, what I wanted to make sure to tell you guys is don't press it up against mm. their head and kind of let the clipper do the work. Okay. Because this this clipper especially, you don't need pressure on it. You know what I mean? It's, it cuts the hair. Trust me. Good tip. That is a good tip. If you're going to use the senior. As light-handed yeah. as possible. Um, You want to make sure that you choke up on it, like, you know, like a baseball player. Totally. If you choke up on that bat, you get a lot of good control. And that's another great thing. Oops. Here is our wall oil. Someone just handed it to me. So just so you know. So that's what you would yep. use at the end and of the day. And then how you do it is, I'm not going to open this, but it's one, two, three. And then you kind of want to let it get in there. And okay. Then, Got it. Absolutely. All right, Jamie, how we doing? Good. I'm over here. With I was wondering what you were going to do with that side, so now yeah. we can see it. I think it was important to mention that I'm using a lot of my light and a lot of the light in the room and adjusting their head so I can kind of get a better read on things. If I stay straight up, I can't exactly use that t-shape to pull out from my clipper i need to kind of move their head so that they're i'm able to like stretch the skin sometimes there'll be like dips in the skull or bones protruding and you really just want to be able to get in there and move things around as much as you need to you know so don't be afraid to i remember when i first started school crying because i was like how do i get behind their ear, you know, like, so get really comfortable kind of moving people around and getting them in the, into the position that you need them to be in so your clipper can get what it needs to get. So before you start cutting again, yeah. I noticed your t-shirt. Do you want to show us your t-shirt? My yeah, week, 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 fade, repeat. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? The first 20 people who sign up for Booksy, three months for a dollar, you get one of those free week, week, fade t-shirts. Which honestly, it's a it's a COVID coveted T-shirt, so we want to make sure you get it. So that's our promo. So you get three months of Booksy for a dollar. The first twenty people who sign up will get one of those awesome T-shirts for free. That's awesome. I think I'm gonna sign up just so that I can get a T-shirt. And you can get the T-shirt and a hoodie, and a free year of Booksy, and the finale shaver, and a mag trimmer, and a wall cordless magic clip. If you comment and ask a question, you can be entered to win all of that stuff, which is pretty awesome. And if you like any of our wall tools. You will get 25% off any wall tool today as well. Amazing. Make sure you keep asking questions because you can win a magic clip, a trimmer, a mag trimmer, a finale shaver, a free one year booksy um, subscription, and a free hoodie and a t shirt. It's a lot so of keep good on stuff. Asking those questions. It's a lot of good <laughs> stuff. I wish I was like, <laughs> so someone came through the question right away because sure. I heard about it right away and how amazing it is. Uh, Tammy wants to know what causes my new clipper to bite tender skin? Which clipper head? I, she just said new her new clipper. Oh, her new General. clipper. Gotta oil it, boo. Yeah, oil it. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure that, I'm guessing that she didn't drop it if it's brand new, but make sure that she takes, oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Make sure she takes a look at it and see that they are all, it's all even on the top. I'm just going to show you this with the same thing. So sometimes when it bites, it's because it's too close or that somehow it's shifted 
So sometimes, and I don't know if it's ours or somebody else's, but you know, in packaging and shipping, sometimes the blades tend to shift a little bit. So she wanted to make sure that she looks at it and sees that they're all even. The, the cutting blade and the other blade are all nice and even. You get, you get a bite. But a lot of times it's oily. I have another question for you, Taylor. Um, especially with a transformation like this, or maybe a client who's doing a shorter clipper cut for the first time, what is the importance of talking to them about styling and maintenance at home those first few weeks after getting a short cut like that? I think styling is really key for pixie cuts. A lot of women want to get pixie cuts because they're like, I don't want to do my hair. <laughs> Sometimes it's more work, honey. So <laughs> just explaining to them what cut is going to be easy. Like with Caroline, she had a natural wave pattern. So I'm not going to give a, her a haircut where she has to style it back and smooth because that's going to be too much work unless they're willing to do that so explaining what's going to be easiest for their hair type how much time they're willing to spend on their hair and products and products maintenance are products are key to short hair styles and i agree having been a short hair person my whole life i have found that it's, it's twice as long sometimes but it's all about the finish and it's all about the set it's all about a really good cut too And explaining maintenance. And what does maintenance sound like to you? Tell me what that means. So what would you say like? Well, so I'm bald, honey. So this is. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for pixie cuts, it needs to be three to four weeks if you really want it to pop and be sharp. And I think if you've never had short hair before, you don't really realize that. <laughs> right. So do you encourage your customers to pre-book as they leave, especially the ones with shorter hair? Because we all know from you and I having shorter hair in two weeks, you know, you're starting to push the limit. So are, is everyone pre-booking and what does that look like and what do you encourage them to do as far as all that? I always encourage my staff to pre-book clients just because you always get those last minute clients that are like, oh, I can't get in with you. Can I come in tomorrow? And it's like, no, honey, like let's get you on the books. Let's make sure you're on point for all your events. And also something that I think is vital to bring up in the consultation is like, how often do you want to see me? Right. Because if you don't want to see me every two weeks, then I'm not going to recommend you get a skin fade and I'm not going to recommend you get a lineup. That's a great so point. just explaining that to them, that's going to get you a lifelong client because a majority wouldn't take the time to say that, you know? No, absolutely. Because short hair is, there's a lot of maintenance with short hair. And, you know, so let's talk about the reverse. So let's say that she decided she wants to start going it out a little bit. So how do you kind of start to transition your customers from really short hair to not really like long, but if she wanted to start to kind of fill it in. And a lot of, I think, hairdressers get a little confused because they're like, okay, now she doesn't want to be really short anymore. She's not growing it out like down her back, but she wants, you know, maybe to get that middle ground short hair. So how do you start to transition them that way? Well, I think that's our job is to make the grow out cute. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? No one wants to wear a hat for five months. <laughs> so just explaining to them, you know, these are our options. A lot of times I'll have people grow out the top so that when they have to grow out the sides, the top is able to actually cover it. So normally like that disconnected, like you're rocking right now, mm -hmm. just so that longer piece can cover the grow out on the side. So you're, you're kind of preventing that awkward stage where it's growing straight out, you know? Awesome. All right, Miss Tina, where are we at right now? I'm almost done. So what's left is I have to style her hair, but this is how she said she likes a little bit of bulk, so I'm not going to blend all of it out. So I'm going to leave this line right here so it kind of shows the movement of it. You, know okay. I mean? the, you have to pay attention to the long as well as the short part so that it gels together. Once someone's looking in the mirror, they're like, oh, man, it's off. Mm. I mean, one side's higher than the other. You always want to think like the customer. When they're looking in the mirror, what are they going to see? Mm -hmm. Are they going to see, like, bulk hair and no bulk hair? So, and then they're cursing you out <laughs> the whole time. So, uh, so I like to just pay attention and remember, you know, they're going to have some So, make sure everything is neat. So, awesome. And I see you're doing sheer over comb, which sometimes can be a little bit tedious mm -hmm. for people who aren't you know used to it because mm -hmm. you know you could wind up now creating a whole nother line of demarcation with your comb and your shear that you didn't do with your oh clipper. yeah so how did you learn how to do this and what's your favorite way to, to teach it or your favorite way to do this 
So I'm always, I'm always putting it up against here. So sometimes how I started practicing was I, I'll put my finger up against the comb like this. Mm -hmm. and, I, and then I'll, and it stops this finger from moving, your index finger. So I put it up against and I'm just like going up and mm -hmm. it keeps it level. It keeps it level. So that's how I practice in the beginning. Um, other than that, I just try to keep it flat to the comb. So I'm not coming, uh, cutting too much off. Because mm -hmm. I could keep, if I put the comb like this, it's going to be uneven. And then that'll create another line. So I just want to cut the least amount of hair as possible. As many times as I need to do it, I could be here all day doing it just to make sure it's perfect. You know what I mean? I don't need to rush through this haircut at all. So, Miss Jamie, hey. now we're like, we're almost, well, we're in Chicago here now, but we're almost on free to roam status kind of universally now. And so we've got our customers coming back. We're, you know, short hair customers like me, we're really out of luck for a few months, right? Yeah. So where do you see the short hair trends going? I mean, are you seeing your short hair customers keep the short hair where they liking it long and now you're just kind of tweaking it? Or where, do you see short hair is here to stay? Let's talk a little bit about oh, short man. hair trends. So in the beginning, everyone had such long hair when they were coming back that we wanted to keep some of it. So you've seen a lot of those um, mullets coming back in and the, the longer sides. But I think now with the weather changing, at least here in Chicago, We've been doing a lot of um, taking it all the way down and cutting it back off. I think people are ready to like shed some of that 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 uh, that winter winter length and and step into something fresh and clean and feeling tight. But yeah, but short haircuts I think are are nice for people because they get the ability to change up their look every six weeks. Like what we do today on Rachel. She'll come in in four to six weeks and it'll be like a blank canvas and we get to create something all over again. So same thing with like the finishing product. So I'll send Rachel home with like something like a shiny pomade from 1919. I'll also send her home with something matte, like a matte control cream. That way she gets two different looks out of one short haircut. We were talking a little bit with Taylor about pre-booking. So talk, let's talk about that in your salon, your shop. So what do you, do you guys need pre-booking? Do you pre-book all your short cuts? Yeah, what I really like to do because I do cut and color is I like to make sure that I have all my colors set and that my short haircuts get to pop right into the middle during their processing times. So what I like to do is gain control of my schedule or if you're using an app as like Booksy is setting my time perfectly for my, I like to take about 45 minutes, which is exactly the amount of time that I need for a hair color to process and then those holes will just get filled up. So if I don't pre-book a client, the perfect spot is available online through my Booksy app. Oh, awesome. That's great. That's, That's a really, you know. really good tip. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I think the most important thing or some of the most frustrating things is when a customer isn't didn't pre-book and now we're three weeks into a short haircut and now they have to wait another three weeks. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and even though they get good mileage, it's not as tight as they wanted or not as fresh as they wanted. So I think pre-booking. Do you offer any... Um, promotions within your salon for pre-booking at all or it's just like a given you know what that's a great question it's just kind of a given at this point in my career but when i was first starting i would offer like a five dollar discount mm. or something like that to 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 earn the loyalty of the of the new guests mm -hmm. so i think in the beginning of my career that's a great way in my shop now our new our new talent that join us on the floor we do promotions actually our last promotion we gave away a wall massager and a wall uh, like beard groomer mm -hmm. to the person who was lucky enough to win the pre-book raffle. So we, we do fun stuff, promotions, giveaways, stuff like that for, for our guests as well. Mm -hmm. So talking about like, you know, using Booksy as a way to build your customer base, um, we've been, I've been around for a million years. You haven't been around for a million years. But what would, advice would you have to the new hairdresser, the new, the new barber out there that is trying to build their customer, their customer base? How would you suggest it? I would say, man, your haircut looks awesome. I cannot wait to see you again. This haircut's going to expire in four weeks. When you come back, can you bring your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your, your mom or your dad? Because I'm just starting to build my career. I'm trying to get it going. I'll give you $15 off and come in and bring your friends. That's a good idea. I'm asking for referrals. I'm asking for reviews online. I'm just really trying to be about the business. It's more than what I can create here. But if I don't pre-book, I don't secure my future. I don't know what I'm going to have in three months. So I, I do my best to, to pre-book and ask for referrals and ask for, for 
you know, loyalty and friends and family. And, and it builds a lot of trust and people then come in and let me do whatever I want to their head. Absolutely. And then you have like a two year waiting period to get That's in. Right. We just had a great question that I think everyone may be able to speak to. Do you charge extra for these designs and kind yes. of like you do? Mm -hmm. How do you I, charge for those? I feel like if it's just a simple design, I, we start off at 10. $10 for a little simple design, a star or a hot or something like that, a little line or something. And then it goes from there for, you, for doing a picture of a logo or, you know, a football team or whatever. Then it goes based off time. That makes sense. Yeah, from there. So is it more about time invested? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to, Taylor here is, is um, he's doing like the final, final, final. So tell us now what you've done to kind of connect everything. Because this is yeah. really important. Yeah, so now I'm just doing a low fade to make the cut really pop and I'll add a little bit of edge. So I base the lowest guideline off of the overall shape that I created with the graduation to kind of make everything flow together. So I did the lowest guideline with my detailers and now I'm going in with the open no guard. And how did you get comfortable with the open no guard? Because we were just taking it with, with Tina, but Tina's done it, Jamie's done it, you've done it. And you guys all have an awesome like technique with how you're doing this. And for somebody at home that's looking at you do this, they're, they're frightened. They're I'm going to shift over here too because Tina's done. So I'm going to just grab, I'll, I'll be filming with you guys so we get a okay. different angle. So awesome. go ahead, just pretend like so I'm not here. Tell me about like how you first started just using a, a clipper with no guard and what that felt like and how you kind of ramped yourself up to get comfortable. I think something for us to take into consideration is defining what a fade truly is because a fade only exists because of light. So if we're fading the hair like this, the light isn't living in the space that we're fading. So it's really important to position the head outward and allow the light to flow through. And if you can actually see the light flowing through the hair, it's a lot easier to fade. So I always thought I just sucked at fading, but when I made that little switch, it made everything a lot easier. So if you're pulling the clipper towards you, as Jamie was stating earlier, there's no way that you're going to create a hard line. Fading in and of itself is graduation. So I think once I got that mind head wrapped around it, it was a lot easier for me to see it on a canvas because I think before it was just like, oh my gosh, it's like ball to go from ball to like long and then how do you connect all of this together? But at the end of the day, fading is graduation. And just like with um, off scale cutting, with a graduated bob or any kind of graduation, you can start very short to very long or just a very long graduation, depending upon how you're kind of doing it. It's the same thing with on scale. You mm -hmm. just determine where you want the shortest part to be and graduate up from there. I think a lot of it comes down to your technique and holding the clipper too, because mm -hmm. a lot of people will have a really aggressive technique when they're fading and that's automatically going to create really harsh lines so just making sure that your technique is always matching what you want the overall result to be and you don't want to like choke your clipper and i think that's what we see all the time it's like people are very it's either the nerves or it's just that's how they think that it works so it's like it's a very like you said it's like an aggressive grab on the clipper where you, i see people with it and it's like very like but really it's i'm left hand so that doesn't even feel right mm -hmm. but really it's all about just holding something very um, precious in your hand. I'm always like, think about it if someone gave you a priceless work of art and you're holding it very, very, or baby, very, very, very <laughs> gingerly, right? I oh, hope. Yeah. Little baby. <laughs> this is my baby. Right. <laughs> awesome. All right, awesome, cool. So your finished look, so tell me how you finished it and what you did. So I used the 1919 pomade, which is uh, has a high shine. You want to put a little in your hand? I know you already did it on her, but tell us a little bit about it. And the whole factor on it and stuff. So why, why did you determine the pomade was the best one to use? Well, the pomade was the best one to use because I know she has this hair that sticks straight up. So what I had to do is use something a little stronger, and that was pomade for me. Um, and just ran it through. Not, not too much because I don't want it to look, like, greasy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm just kind of working it through her whole entire head. Does the pomade usually come, like, do you, is it is in a tube versus uh, so, a puff? Yeah, so yeah. all of our 1919 products that are hair products are in a tube. Um, we chose to go with a tube route as opposed to the puff route because um, it's a lot more sanitary. Totally. You're not digging your hand or your finger into something. The pomade that Tina chose to use, it's low in terms of hold factor, but it's high in terms of shine. So Jesse does have the kind of hair that can tolerate this because it's very, if you look at it, 
It's like glass and it's very dense. It doesn't, you have to really rub it in your hands to get it to go. Mm -hmm. So for somebody who has finer hair, this isn't going to be good for them. Okay. It's great for someone just like her who really just needs to kind of control those colics, control hair that is, um, tends to stand up or has a propensity to stand up. If you were going to take her hair and slick it all back and she wanted to have a different look, Pommy would be perfect for that as totally. well. Too. Awesome. We have a question for Jamie. So do you want to Absolutely. Ask Let's see. Jamie. Go ahead. So Brian wants to know, are you using a zero gap detail? i come over here too. Line? Oh, great question, Brian. I use it just how it comes out of the box and it is so perfect. It's like razor sharp, in my opinion. Um, so I like to use it exactly how it comes. The detailer doesn't come out of the box zero gapped. Close, but not not really. Um, it comes out, um, so it's not zero gapped, I don't know what to say. Yeah. If you want to zero gap it, though, we have a tool called the ProSet tool that we've just released on wallpro.com that will actually give you the opportunity to zero gap it um, with the tool. It will be part of, if you purchase a detailer from here on in, it will be automatically part of the detailer. So it is not, they are not zero gapped out of the box. Just because we realize that while professional, not everybody needs to have a zero gap. The mm -hmm. other thing is the detail is extremely, extremely sharp. So if you're not used mm -hmm. to a zero gap tool, you could run the risk of cutting somebody or getting it too close or just not having the right, um, not even the right result. I always suggest using your tools out of the box as they are and adjusting them as necessary. Makes sense. Agreed. I also feel like, Jamie, I see you like heavily using the mirror. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So the one thing in the salon, your best friend is the mirror. So when I'm working on, say, the right side of Rachel's head, I'll spin her and I can see the left side in the mirror. So I'm checking for balance the entire time. Mm. So when I'm working on this side, I can clearly see the other side in the mirror. So also from straight on, I can check for balance from right to left. I always turn and look, turn and look. And my favorite part is, especially when I'm finished, is to turn them completely around. And you give yourself a different lens. Like when I'm staring at it because I've been fading for 40 minutes, right? I can't see sometimes. Sometimes I need to look away <laughs> yeah, and then totally. I come back to the mirror and I'm like, oh, it's awesome. Or, mm. oh, I need to get in there and, and do a little bit more. So the mirror... I could never cut hair without it. So did I just see you use a clipper on the top of her head? Yeah. So, so was, walk us through that. Yeah. I was, this is a six guard. I started with an eight and I worked my way down. What I want to do for Rachel, she has nice, dense hair. So what I want to do is just create a little bit of like texture in there. If I go with against the grain and I would come in, I would probably cut off all of her blonde, right? So what I want to do is just make sure that I want to see, she has wavy hair too. So I want to see, again, going with the grain as if it was wood grain. I'll put on, I did an eight, a seven. I worked my way down because I don't want to cut it off. I just want to cut into it, right? So this is a six. Closed or open? I'm going to open it up. And then I like to hold it upside down. You know, normally we would be here. So I just go ahead and flip it, keep her all the way open. I need to grab a comb. Sorry. That's, that's actually a really so many people filming you. What she that was actually a really important step that she spoke about earlier is that she started with the longer one. So she started with the eight and then brought it down to a seven, then brought it down to a six. If you're going to start to do things like this, you want to start these techniques. Starting out longer is better mm -hmm. because we can always take more off. Anybody who can figure out how to put more on is going to be a trillionaire. <laughs> so, you know, get used to your tool, feel good with your tool, and always start in the open position with one of the longer attachment combs because you're going to not take off as much. And again, what she's doing, raking it down as opposed to if she goes up, she's going to take off length. Oh, she's yeah. raking down, she's taking out bulk. Very important distinction to Huge make there. Distinction. I tell her to like show you what happens if she goes in the opposite direction, but Rachel won't be our friend. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. All right. So, oh, Taylor has pulled out the tray razor. Let's talk a little bit about this. What are you doing? All right. So, I just this. stole her. <laughs> I took Taylor. I took Jamie's. Do you want to give those? Yes. Thank you so much. So you got a free hand now. Yeah, I know. Those grow, <laughs> those grow feet and walk away. So. so, I'm just going in and outlining her hairline with a straight razor just to make it pop a little bit more. A lot of times I won't even use shave gel for this, depending on their skin type, just because to me, shave gel is, 
is making the blade slip. And for this, I don't want the blade to slip. I want to have precision. So as long as you are pulling the skin and have really light tension, let the blade do the work. Uh, I feel like a lot of people use a little too much pressure with the straight blade, and that's when you start to get ingrowns and stuff like that. Um, the, the blade's gonna cut the hair. It's a straight razor, so just be gentle and let it do the work. And I love that you're using the straight razor on her because I think so many times we like associate the straight razor with like men's grooming or typical quote unquote men's grooming, right? But that's not really what it's about. The idea behind a straight razor was always to do that, to do a lineup, to make things crystal clear, to remove some extra hair and to just get very precise. So it certainly can be used on every single short haircut. And it's not something that's just necessarily safe for men's grooming, quote unquote, or beard work. Absolutely, everyone has the right to be fresh and sharp. <laughs> mm -hmm. What I think is so cool about this transformation is also just watching Taylor use clippers, using shears, now using a razor and how all the different tools complete the look. Absolutely. And what a thing for a client to see as well. I mean, that shows them it's not just, you don't just sit down and you get your hair buzzed. Like there's a lot of things going into this, a lot of considerations that an expert knows, you know. And it's back to the customization of short haircuts. Absolutely. She's not going to go anywhere else right now and be able to mimic that. So, you know, Taylor has a customer for life because she was versatile enough to just think outside the box and mm -hmm. use all those different tools. She said, creative. yes, she does. Yeah. <laughs> and I, just, adorable. I think that's where the industry is moving in general, though. It's like if you're not continuing to learn and you're not open minded, you're going to get left behind because mm -hmm. at this point, every trend takes both skill sets. Right. Absolutely. So that's just the way it's going, especially mullets, which I've noticed are a big oh, trend. I don't know if it's too. just a Chicago thing, but everyone's Oh, they're like, huge here. Oh, they can't see the back of my head on a Zoom call. So <laughs> I just rock a mullet for the first time in my life. I think mullets are here to stay. You know, I don't know. They came into fashion when I was in high school, which I hate to even I love say it. what they did. But yeah, but they're back. And, and for those people that tuned in later, we actually kind of started, Peel Your Model came in with kind of this like curly, grown out mullet vibe and now we've transformed it all the way to here and we'll yeah, also be sharing quite the, the transformation and as you can tell by the floor <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys will have the before and afters posted on our insta story btc's insta story um after this all of our clients today were gorgeous before i cannot wait to see them all lined up for their afters as well so we have um jamie is now showing us um the kind of and, and believe it or not people like i think mistakenly associate movement with longer hair right mm. you can definitely movement is even more important on shorter hair as you can see right here where if you remember before um rachel's hair grows very thick and very dense and by just doing that raking on the top you can see she's got that movement so tell us what you're going to do right now so you know what i did i took our 1919 beard balm because it's so conditioning and I took some and I ran it through Rachel's hair and it's so soft, it gives so much shine. It, it does exactly for the beard. I wanted to have that same softness and conditioning for the base of her hair. So now I'm gonna go in, Tina, would you toss me the 1919 pomade? So I'm gonna go in with some pomade for some extra shine. And this is my favorite. It comes out like glass, which I absolutely love. If anyone has ever blown glass before. And I love that. It's oh, it really this, does. Yeah, it's so mm -hmm. cool. And I love that it comes in these tubes because no longer do we have to pass around that puck through the salon and have everyone's fingers in it, right? <laughs> so we get to come in and I want to showcase her wave, right? So I want to come in with some pomade and I want to get it inside her hair, not just on top. I want to get it all the way through. That way it has complete saturation. And she could wear it messy, you know, because that's cute too, like a little crop. But I thought it would be fun. Uh, to go in and use some of our combs to create some texture. So if we go with our barber comb and comb everything forward, just like we cut it, go in. You can see the texture that you cut into it too. Kind of laid a foundation in. That's right. So that the hair kind of soaked up that conditioning so that it was ready. So you kind of filled in all the holes. That's right. Primed then, it. Absolutely. It's like painting a wall. Like if, you, if someone Spackled. had knocked out a yeah. bunch of holes in a wall and then you went and painted over you can have the most expensive paint but it's still gonna look bad mm -hmm. so what that beard bomb did is it went in there and it filled it so the hair was better able to accept the pomade and then for her to be able to do what she's doing right now looks cool and hair on your face is hair especially with her color like mm -hmm. her blonde with the you know that always looks that's super cool yeah coming hair. through mm -hmm. it's like uh, like a mink yeah she's minked it's awesome so you can do that with a 
finer teeth or you can go in like with some wider teeth and really exaggerate that and then you know just lock it in and just have fun because you could just start over totally right every four weeks fresh canvas looks great and how often does rachel normally get her haircut it's just because it's this short i think she would like to cut it every two or three weeks but you know she's also a hairdresser so you know how that goes whenever anybody has time right rachel That's how right. often do you prefer i prefer every other day she said every day every other day <laughs> I but love realistically, that. Realistically, about once a month. That's funny. That's why it's so important for us to teach our children how to cut hair. Because I always think if I just <laughs> my, dad, my haircut, I wouldn't have to worry, right? He doesn't have to learn how That's to That's awesome. Hair. All right. Very cute. Very awesome. Are we, are we finishing up? We're finished. Oh, my God. What a transformation. It looks so good. The fringe is everything to me. I definitely loved tying together kind of like a PC and textured top with a really tight fade on the sides. I think that's kind of, like I said, where the industry's going. People want to be able to style the top a bit. Totally. But still have that mm -hmm. cleanliness on the sides. So I think before, before we wrap it up, I think everyone should go through and like give one thing that you want our viewers to like take away. What's like the one takeaway that you want them to get from you, Taylor, whether it's this haircut or just in general with shortcuts? I think it's important for us to neutralize the industry and invite everyone from all walks of life into your shop or salon. I think that there's a lot of um, toxicity in places and that's not fair and we need to welcome everyone, create a home and a sacred space for anyone to walk through the door and express themselves because that's what we're called to do. So. That's what I stand behind. Love Thanks that. For watching. Yeah, awesome. Love that. Thank you. Tina, what's your like one takeaway you want everyone to um, along the lines of what Taylor said, I mean, it's everyone gets a haircut. So it's not a man, it's not a woman, it's not it's nothing now. It's just hair. Mm -hmm. So we're cut we're accepting everyone as they come in and just take it from there. I mean, learn how to do every style of haircut, not just long hair or short hair. Take them all. Absolutely. Jamie, what is your like takeaway from today? Oh man, you want everyone to take away. In agreement, I think um, short hair is for everyone. Let's not limit what we can create based on, you know, social norms of short hair or long hair. And I would say if you are in charge of your pricing, like through Booksy, offer a gender neutral, gender free pricing structure. That way, whoever comes in with short hair, you're not placing some kind of identity on them, and they feel comfortable coming into your safe, sacred space. I think technically, I think practice, practice, practice. The best part of short hair is using every single tool, clippers, trimmers, razors, shears, texture shears, have fun. It grows back. And I think short hair cutting is, is you know, more like sculpting. Mm -hmm. So creative freedom and, and go for it. Fabulous. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank and you thank, so much. Thank you, Lisa, as well. Thank you, guys. This was so fun. fun. Bye. Thanks for joining. See you and later. Sure you get to your promo. Get your hoodie. Get your t shirt. Get 25% off a wall tool. Absolutely. We look forward to seeing you someplace very soon when we are all free to roam. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thanks, Heather.